But let's bring in someone who got a pretty good deal in Edmonton to play with Connor McDavid. And that's Connor Brown of now the Edmonton Oilers. Good morning, Connor. Morning. How you doing? Uh, we are doing pretty good. Uh, I'm, we were talking earlier. It must have felt pretty good to be coveted by one Connor McDavid. So can you let us know how this process went <laughs> down? We were hearing, you know, suggestions that there was a little whining and dining happening with the Oilers players, uh, really hard recruiting of your services. Uh, so signing with the Edmonton Oilers, the feelings there, and what it was like being recruited by you know, the best player in the sport. Uh, there's dining, not much whining going on. I think, All right. uh, <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, I think Connor's in a position where he's pretty, he's pretty focused. I know that he's, he's looking to, um, looking to get that team to the next level. And, um, you know, so it was, no, it was just a conversation over dinner of what the kind of situation would look like in Edmonton and, and how he sees the team and, and its progression over the years and where he sees me fitting in. So, uh, you know, it was nice to paint the picture. Yeah, Elliot Freeman on their 32 Thoughts podcast. I know he probably a little bit of an exaggeration, but said if Connor Brown had said no, I think Connor McDavid might have driven to his house, thrown him in the trunk of his car, and driven him to Edmonton. I think Connor McDavid was taking no for an answer. So to have uh, the best player in the world, um, a former friend, a former teammate of yourself, um, give you that vote of confidence, obviously is super, super important. But like, what clicked before when you were a part of this team, uh, a part of your your time with Connor McDavid? Obviously, you've seen him grow into his stardom. And and yourself as well as a player but when you look back at the time you know what was the what was the perfect click there well i think uh you know it, it, to be honest i you know his skill level of course is just uh miles uh, miles above the rest but um you know i think the way that he he plays through the neutral zone um you know i, I feel as, as if i can help i can read off it uh, think that way um kind of create uh, tr- chances in transition and uh you know little things all over the ice that you know uh, it's been a while since we played together we had an opportunity to link up at bio steel camp last year and we had some fun together so um i'm just looking forward to it i think it's going to be a fun year so uh, I was running a bit of a num- the numbers on uh, Connor McDavid, just going through his uh, career, and I found that you were the only teammate he's ever had that consistently outscored him. So Uh-oh. should we expect the same thing this year with the Edmonton Oilers? <laughs> Drama. Yeah, well, I only I think I I think he was 15 and I was 19, so I had <laughs> a little bit scoring. of scoring. <laughs> you don't have to add that a context. Win to win. Card. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, um, no, I I mean it. Of course not. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to come in. I'm going to try to bolster the penalty kill and and uh, try to play. You know, help the team play. You know, a better defensive five on five game all around and 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 add some scoring. I'm just going to try to do what I do at, at this level and and let 97 do what he does. <laughs> so speaking of reunions, uh, you'll have another one with Zach Hyman. But the uh, last time you were traded to Ottawa, I believe you were at his wedding or the night before his wedding. You didn't tell him. Uh, obviously, you wanted to keep the, the big day for him him himself. But how did it go this time around? Because, uh, you know, a little bit of a different situation, maybe more of an excitement. Yeah, well, well, Hyman was involved in, in, uh, in the recruitment <laughs> job, I would say, as well. And, you know, he... He was reaching out to me and, uh, you know, made me feel like that it would be a good home for me and, uh, you know, made me feel wanted there. And, um, you know, he's the guy that I've always looked up to a couple of years older than me going through the system in Toronto and, uh, you know, just the way he prepares and his work ethic, his commitment. Um, you know, he, he's just a, uh, you know, he's an impressive person. And so, you know, that's, those are the types of people I want to be around. Um, to make this next step and, and uh, you know, to make, help the Oilers make that next step is, uh, you know, they don't cut any corners, uh, those two guys. And, um, you know, it, it's bled into their culture there in Edmonton, and it's why they got such a good team. We're speaking with Connor Brown, Edmonton Oilers forward. So uh, we know this season was a tough one for you, only appearing in four games, uh, recovering from a torn ACL. And how tough is it like that? I don't know if you've dealt with um, as severe of an injury in your career before, but to be on the sidelines rehabbing, going through a pretty tough injury, uh, what's that like uh, on the mental side of the game? Well, it's tough. I mean, uh, yeah, it's tough. Um, You know, you learn a lot. You learn a lot about yourself. uh, You kind of get through these things, but... Uh, it doesn't kill you, makes you stronger. And so, yeah, I've, I've worked worked hard throughout this uh, process to to build strength back up, to you know, build mobility in the knee, and 
and uh, you know reassessing the way I train, the way I eat. Um, so you know, there's been a lot of good that's come out of this process. Uh, but yeah, it, it was a tough one mentally, you know, especially at the start to to you know, go into a new team, you're trying to make an impression, um, and you know to have your season kind of extremely short like that. It was uh, it was tough, but you know what? We're on the other end of it. There's light at the end of the tunnel, and I just can't wait to get back on the ice. And how's the how's the knee feeling now? I don't I know you're not fully at uh, full strength, but looking like an October November return or, or even earlier. No, no, I, yeah, I, I should I'll be good for camp. I know it feels good. Um, yeah, it feels good. I'm back on the ice a few times a week now. I'm in the gym and uh, the strength is there, and uh, you know just um, just continuing to build throughout the summer and just get stronger and stronger as uh, as the season comes closer and closer. So lots, if not most teams in the NHL are, are super, super serious, right? Like they have some expectation, some level expectation. Every team says, hey, this we're going in this year trying to win the Stanley Cup. But only a few teams are actually or, you know, maybe 10 to 12 teams should be actually feeling that way. Of course, the Edmonton Oilers should feel that way. And you mentioned like 15 year old Connor and, you know, it was dining and not whining because Connor McDavid is so serious. But it just feels like you are entering a super serious situation with a team that is definitely ready to win. Is that like, is that what you really crave? Is that what you're dying to be a part of a team that has every expectation to win? And if they don't win the Stanley Cup this year, it will be a pretty big disappointment. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I grew up in the Toronto area. We had a good team in one year after year. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I crave that winning culture. Um, you know, and that's what they're building there. Exactly. You hit the nail on the head. That's, that's the environment I want to be in. Um, you know, that, that's the kind of group I want to surround myself with. And, uh, you know, uh, my uh, GM used to say, you know, you, you don't hope to win, you expect to win you're on, when you're on a team like that. And, and, and those guys are expecting to win because they, they, uh, they prepare like they do. So um, I'm excited to be a part of it. It's going to be a fun year. And of course, with, uh, you know, any team that's really, really trying to win, there is a salary cap issue uh, and bringing in free agents is difficult. And you had a interesting structure to your contract in order to get into the doors with the Edmonton Oilers. Is that is that why agents get paid? I mean, that's that's pretty, pretty impressive uh, going the route that you did to try and, uh, you know, make sure that you could fit your salary in and get paid the way you should. Uh, but we haven't really seen many contracts structured this way. Uh, just the process there and uh, how thankful you are to make it work well you know i was in an extremely unique position uh you know, i think i missed like a you have to to get a contract like that you have to miss like over 100 days on roster or something like that from the previous season okay. and have over 400 games so you know there's criteria to have a, a bonus laden contract like that and so um you know, it's uh, so it kind of uh, led an opportunity to to get in the door of a of a really good team that didn't have much cap room that's uh, looking to make a push. So um, the stars kind of aligned. So uh, start excited to get it going. Uh, one more for you here, Connor. Uh, of course, we mentioned the Leafs a couple times here. What what level of Leafs alumni have you reached? Like, are you still keeping tabs on the guys? The overlap, maybe you know what was it was you know two three seasons ago. Uh, are you still like? Is, are you still thinking about the Leafs? Still talking with Leafs? Is it kind of disappeared because it's been so long? Like, what? Where are you at in your stage of Leafs alumni? You know, I, uh, I the guys that were there, they're far and few between now. I think there's only a few guys left from my time there. It seems like there's been tons of turnover, but um, you know, I, I obviously grew up grew up in Toronto, and you, you know, you always keep tabs on the Leafs and and see how they're doing and. Uh, you know, uh, still pretty close with Mitch Marner and, uh, and me and my wife and his soon to be wife are, are close as well. And so, um, you know, I'm sure that there, there'll always be a little part of me, but at this point in my career, you know, it's, uh, uh it's a little bit different. So I'm not too, not too concerned with, uh, you know, the moves the Leafs are making or this, that, the other thing, I'm just kind of, uh, you know, staying in my own lane. You going to the big wedding this summer? Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be some fun. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. we'll be uh, scavenging uh, social media to see how you guys look. So have a blast. Oh yeah, <laughs> it'll I be a try good to time. Keep the phones off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just be whining there. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be that'll be good. Uh, appreciate you jumping on and chatting with us. Um, and good luck this season. We'll see you a few times, I'm sure. And uh, looking forward to catching up down the road. All right, done. Thanks. Sounds good.